My friends, if you've watched any of the vlogs that I've done of my new Pennsylvania setup, you'll know that this is my ad spot corner slash gaming center slash laundry room down here in my dungeon. Linus, not now, we're filming a video, please. But the truth is that I've, I've been playing on console for the entire time. I have my Series X and my PS5 set up down here so that I can play Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, Ratchet and Clank, and then the Series X for whatever Game Pass game I wanna play. But I haven't had a PC set up here because I haven't had the time or kind of figured out how, what PC I wanna put here. But thankfully, our friends over at G-Skill came out with this bad boy, their Z5i Mini ITX case, and they sent it over for me to build my Mini ITX gaming PC to fit in my gaming center over here. So we're gonna build this gaming PC. We're also gonna go over exactly how my gaming area is set up and give you all the details about that after we talk about today's video sponsor. Isn't that right, Linus? He's so supportive. My friends, today's UFT Tech video is brought to you by Filty. Started in early 2019, Filty is a Kansas-based startup that makes reusable nanofiber material that they make for HVAC filters, but can also be converted into face masks. Their washable MERV13 filter is constructed using their patent-pending nanofiber technology, and it's proudly 100% made in the United States, and it maintains its efficiency levels for over eight washes. And that's a big deal because in one year in the United States alone, there are enough disposable filters that get tossed out yearly to wrap around the entire earth 157 times. On average, a filthy washable filter will save you $100 a year opposed to having to buy a disposable filter every three months. And Filthy's washable filters are good for two full years. Filthy initially sponsored us when we were still living in Florida and when I installed their filter in our HVAC system, it made a world of difference. I didn't have it long enough in order to wash it because we ended up moving here to PA. And wouldn't you know it, the filter that they gave me doesn't fit in our current HVAC system, so I had to buy another one. But that's gonna be totally fun, because again, it's gonna last me through those eight washes, through those two years, and it's gonna save me money and make sure that I don't have to go out and buy any sort of disposable filter. They're actually making sure that I have clean air in my home, as well as the fact that we're saving money and saving the environment. So if you wanna check out Filthy, we'll leave a link in the video description for their washable filters, as well as the fact that they do have face mask filters on their website, so you can check all of that out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Filthy for sponsoring today's UFD Tech video. My setup is now complete. I was able to build my mini ITX gaming PC and it rounds out this entire system. And I wanna give a big thanks to ASRock, G-Skill, Sabrent, and Silverstone for helping me out with the components in this system. I couldn't have done it without them, so let's talk about this high-powered machine. As you can see, it's in the G-Skill Z5i case that they just launched. It's mini ITX, but it can fit a high-end system in here. We're gonna be putting in an i9 processor and an RTX 3080 Ti with plenty of cooling to go around. The i9 processor is a 10850K. I actually have this left over from the PC build that I did for my dad, where I surprised him with a brand new gaming PC. You can check it out right up there where I actually did that. However, when I did that build, it was the day before Intel launched their 11th gen processors, and knowing that he had an NVMe 4.0 drive in there, I decided to upgrade him and keep the 10850K for myself. But I'm running into the same problem. We'll get to that in a second. So that i9 10850K has 10 cores, 20 threads and it's going into the ASRock Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard with Thunderbolt 4. This is a great little mini ITX motherboard, has all of the ports on the back end that I could possibly want, including again, Thunderbolt 4, if I ever wanna actually use it. Has two RAM slots, which is gonna be enough, as well as two M.2 slots for me to get all of the storage that I want to into the system. For the RAM, G-Skill also happened to send over their brand new Trident Z Royal Elites. These are the new updated version of the Royals that have more of like a diamond cut shape into them. I opted for the silver one, but this is 32 gigs at 3,600 megahertz. So that's gonna be plenty for gaming. If I ever decide that I wanna do some productivity over here, I could do that as well, but the RAM looks good and performs well. The SSD, as I mentioned, we're running into a bottleneck here. Sabrent's Rocket 4 Plus, one terabyte edition. This is NVMe 4.0, seven gigabytes per second, except for when I'm using it, because now it's three gigabytes per second. I do need to upgrade 
upgrade to an 11th gen Intel. I currently don't have the funds to do that and selling the 10850K would only get me part of the way. So I'm opting for faster CPU speed right now versus that SSD speed. I will upgrade it later on down the line, but I'm not gonna do it right at the moment. But I'm also adding this add a game one terabyte SSD that I had lying around. It has this like RGB diamond encrusted effect that can match the Trident Z Royal Elites very well. So I can actually have two terabytes of storage. And since I had the add a game lying around from the fancy PC build that we did, you can check that out right up there. I didn't have to spend anything on that as well. Cooling the CPU thanks to NZXT is their Z53 240 millimeter AIO. This has the screen on the CPU block where you can put GIFs or anything else that you possibly want, or it could display stats like your CPU temperature, but that 240 millimeter AIO does fit into this Z5i. It has support for up to 280 millimeter radiator in case I wanted to do that. So big thanks to NZXT for sending over that cooler to me as well. For the GPU, this is actually the luckiest GPU I have because I was able to pick it up on the RTX 3080 Ti launch day from Newegg Shuffle. So I actually didn't pay over MSRP for this. I got it the day it launched and it's the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti. It's, it's a great card. It's got all the VRAM. It's got the ability to do 4K gaming. Bam, I paid for this one myself. The two main things in this build that I actually acquired are the 10850K, which I bought for my dad's build, and then this 3080 Ti. But powering this entire system is thanks to Silverstone, their SX750, 750 watt, 80 plus platinum SFX power supply. It's mini, but it can deliver 750 watts. We're not getting anywhere close to that, but it's also remarkably efficient at 80 plus platinum. So I don't have to worry about the power draw so much. The build process, went remarkably smoothly. The Z5i is actually pretty great to build in. You just take off the tempered glass side panels and everything's just kind of obviously laid out. You've got the motherboard spacing, you've got the power supply spacing, and then on the back side, you have the GPU. It helps to make it so that the GPU has its own thermal area and then the CPU exhausts out the back where the 240 millimeter AIO is mounted to. Overall, I really love the look of the Z5i. It's still mini ITX. It's still a small form factor, as you can see, right here, it's roughly the same height as the PS5, and it's roughly the same thickness, maybe a little thicker than the Xbox Series X, but it definitely doesn't obviously stand out in this setup where I'm going for more of a home console type vibe with what I have. I could have gone with a smaller case, but I really like the design of the Z5i. So I'm again, thankful that G Skill sent it over to me. On the top, you do have a dust filter that's magnetically removable. It's really easy to pop out, but it also has space for two and a half inch drives. I think if I read the manual correctly, there might be spacing for the three and a half inch drive. Don't quote me on that, but you can get plenty of storage in this. You can get plenty of cooling in this. And let's talk about the cooling performance. As you can likely see behind me since I started this part of the video, I am mining, but that's really just to test out the thermals to push this to its limits. So the 10850K and the RTX 3080 Ti are both running at 100% mining at full efficiency. And the 3080 Ti is currently sitting at 73 degrees Celsius. So it's actually not getting all that high. It's not really reaching the top of its peaks, whereas the 10850K is sitting at around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. So plenty of thermal headroom left in this. It's exhausting out properly. I set the AIO to exhaust instead of intake, and I'm hoping that the negative pressure build might actually draw in air where it's appropriate. I haven't tested it out to see if I could get better temps from intaking the air on the AIO, but I'm happy with the actual cooling performance. And this is probably like one of the top of the line systems that you could put in this. So I don't think you have to worry in case you're looking at picking up the Z5i for yourself. But I have a great mini ITX build that again, fits in my like basement living room aesthetic. I did swap out the Xbox Series X for the Z5i because I just moved that to my upstairs living room, especially since all Xbox exclusive games can be purchased on the PC. I don't have to necessarily have that duplicated here. There are a few games that are on the Xbox Game Pass that aren't on the PC Game Pass. So it's still kind of like, it can make sense to have both in case you want to do that and you don't want to have to buy all of the games. It's still an, a, a decent idea, but I 
just put the Series X upstairs for my kids in case they want to play it on that. But make sure to get subscribed and stay tuned because we have another mini ITX build coming for my upstairs gaming situation. And now to just go over the rest of my system. As you can see right here, these are my KRK Rocket speakers. I've had these for over a year when I built my like ultimate uh, editing station when I moved back to the United States last year. And that's powered by my topping D90 DAC. So I have optical going out from the TV into the D90 DAC. And that means no matter what I'm doing, whether it's watching Netflix or playing games on my computer or playing games on the PS5, it'll automatically switch over the audio and drive it through these KRK rockets, which sound absolutely amazing, have great bass. I love them so much. PlayStation 5 is a digital edition. It does have the dbrand warzone skin on it i kind of was waiting to do this video until i could get my dark plates in i ordered those months ago but i got an email from dbrand saying that they're going to be delayed by another month so it wasn't worth waiting in my opinion and then the tv this is something that i actually did a video on last year where i think this is probably one of the best bang for buck tvs that you can get if you're looking for current gen or as it was back then next gen video games you can do 4k 120 over hdmi 2.1 at the cheapest price point i think this went for $650 when it came out brand new. I'll leave links in the video description for all of this in case you want to check it out for yourself. But I can get 4K, 120 hertz, and the 3080 Ti can handle that no problem. I did test runs of Red Dead Redemption 2 where I was able to get close to 120 FPS average when I enabled Nvidia's DLSS at ultra settings. So the highest settings possible plus DLSS gets me close. If I wanted to drop it a little bit to high, it'd be totally fine. And then lastly, obviously we have Linus here in the studio with me because wherever I go, Linus goes with me. He's forever in my heart, so now he could forever be by my side. UFDstore.com. The only other piece of the puzzle that I'm still missing is I got a Couchmaster gaming setup. Specifically, I bought this one. It's gonna get delivered tomorrow, so I'll be able to play video games while I'm sitting on the couch and not have to necessarily rely on using a controller for something like Steam's big picture mode. But I have everything I could possibly want set up in this area, maybe would like maybe want a bigger TV potentially, but I'm not gonna spend the money on that right now. I, I, I'm tapped out. Which again, big thanks to all the companies that contributed to this build. NZXT, G-Skill, Silverstone, Sabrent, as well as ASRock couldn't have done it without you. I would have still just been sitting on my Xbox Series X. And as we all know, that's just completely unacceptable. The next stage of this entire project is to potentially build this out into a streaming area, somehow get a camera to be mounted behind the TV and then get audio fed into here. That's like next stage so that I can stream while I'm over in this station. I'm not currently ready for that yet, but you can get subscribed in case you're interested in my personal gaming setup journey. With that being said, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.